Have you had enough of manly misting your terrariums, vivariums and your animals? Then today we're going to be unboxing the Exoterra Monsoon Solo 2. We're going to be unboxing it and setting it up on the terrarium behind me. So if you want to know a little bit more then don't go anywhere and that's all coming up right after this. Yes, roomies, welcome back to another video and thanks for joining me. So like I said, in today's video, we're going to be installing and unboxing the Exoterra Monsoon Solo version 2. And I'll talk about the previous version and some of the issues I've had with this in the past later on in the video. So this is the new and improved version because Exoterra made fixes to the issues you had before. Now, as you can see, this is a nice sleek little unit and there's not many parts and it's quite easy to assemble as you can see. So in the box, other than the reservoir and the control unit, you also get the power adapter. It also includes some tubing and one spray nozzle. Now this can house up to two nozzles, but you will need to buy the additional separate. So we've got all the parts, we've checked out all the bits. So all's left to do now is install it in the wooden vivarium behind me, which houses my female Cuban night and all. Now, so far I've been missing her manually with a sprayer just because I've been working from home, but just for consistency and ease of use for me and obviously better for my anole, we're gonna install this today. So if you wanna know how to install this in a wooden vivarium slash terrarium, then don't go anywhere. Now this is the first time I've installed a sprayer system into a wooden enclosure because typically these are designed to be installed on glass terrariums or anything with a mesh lid. So I've just drilled a hole in the back of the vivarium just so we can feed the pipe in through. Just I find this is easier than trying to get it through the cable management system. So because I've had one of these systems before, I've still got some of the attachments and some extra nozzles. So I'm adding the additional nozzle onto this using a splitter, which I had before. If you want one of these, you will need to buy it separately. In order to install the nozzles in the vivarium, I've drilled two holes in the suction cups and also drilled some pilot holes in the top of the tank. And I've simply used some screws and screwed them in. And that is the same for both the nozzles. This part was a little bit tricky just because of all the lighting in the way and it was really difficult to film. So I hope you can see how I've done it, but it's straightforward. It was just a bit of an awkward task. But now the nozzles are installed, it's time to put the unit underneath the vivarium and we can look to test the unit. Okay, so we've got it in box, we've got it installed, and hopefully this will benefit Castro, may make my life a little bit easier. But this is the first time I've ever installed it in a wooden viv, and as you've probably seen, it was quite straightforward. Um, by drilling holes in the suction cups, that seemed to do the trick, so I'll keep an eye on it now and manage it going forward. But this is a really simple unit to use and this is the reason why I wanted to give it another go because this is the version 2, now there is another version which I'll talk about in a second but this one is a really small compact unit, it holds I think one and a half um, litres of water which isn't a massive amount but I wanted to see how it get on in this tank so I might upgrade it to the multi very soon. Now this is really easy to use and I think for people who are quite intimidated by technology or some of these things if you've never used them before, this is a really good way of starting because the control panel is very straightforward. So if you want to set this, all you need to do is two dials. So one of the dials, you'll set how many times in a day you want the sprayer to go off. And then on the other dial, you can set how long you want that spray period to go. So it could be a second, 10 seconds, a minute or whatever you want it to be. Now then you can switch it on just to turn it on as and when you want to and there's also a timing setting as well. If you press that and you set the dials then it'll go off that many times a day for however long you've set it. So it's really straightforward. Yeah there are other options out there on the market. Now I do also have a Miss King which I think is probably one of the best sprayers but it's quite expensive and sometimes be quite complicated to program and set up and you have to buy your own reservoir so if you want something off the shelf you can use straight away then this is a great product. Now I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to go and check it out yourself. 
Now, if you are gonna buy one, I'd really appreciate you using my link because if you do, I'll get a small commission. It doesn't cost you any more. It just helps support the channel and making more videos like this. Now, like I mentioned, I did have one of these in the past, which was the bigger one, which I think the model was like RC400, I think it were back then. So if you are looking to buy the new one, two things to look out for. So they'll either be called the Solo version two, or they'll be called the Multi version two. So the old one, I don't know if they did a smaller one in the past, but I know the bigger one was the RC400 or RC40, whichever it was. And that is the old one. Now, Exoterra did have some issues with this. I had an issue with it. So I had one of these years ago now when I only kept red-eyed tree frogs. So didn't keep anything else. And I had a Exoterra 45, 45, 60, I think, set up. Went on holiday, the spray was up and running and everything was fine before I went. Come home and the tank had literally flooded out of the water section all over the carpet and ruined the setup. The frogs were fine, but it just made a mess. So I was really annoyed with this because I didn't have it very long. But the more research I did, a lot of people experienced this. Now the changes they've made to this one compared to the last one. So you may notice on the control panel of this one, there's no knobs or dials or actual buttons. They're all plastic covered buttons. So keeping it waterproof. So that was one of the issues before. If water got into the control panel, it would then malfunction. But my issue I had is you could, when you took the stopper out of the top to fit it up, then you pour the water in there and the water would still get into the mechanism, which is what caused mine to malfunction. Ooh, malfunction. So it was a bit of a problem. It's really disappointing because I really liked it as a product. But I think it's great that Exoterra have gone around to find a better way of doing this and have actually worked on the problems they had and to make this product even better, which is great. I'll keep you up to date as always, whether I get any issues with this one. But as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. So I will be doing reviews on some of the products we've talked about. If you want to buy anything we talked about today, hit the links in the description. It helps me with the channel, support this channel and help make these videos. As always, I'm wearing my, what am I wearing today? Oh, a comedian guy t-shirt. Um, if you want to buy one, then again, I'll leave links down in the description on my merch site and any of the proceeds to that as well, I'll put straight back into this channel to make the animals' lives better and your experience even better. But I hope you're enjoying these short little videos midweek now. If you've got any thoughts or comments you want to see something in particular, then make sure you let me know. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video.